Andy Costco with the Baltimore Banner. Hey James, welcome to Baltimore. Thanks for having the time today. Yes, thanks for thanks for being here. Yeah, just uh, you know, you had a little bit of time now to kind of digest what this move was like and everything like that. Uh, how, how surprised were you at the time, you know, for the trade, and, and I guess how quickly did you kind of get get involved in, you know, discussing what, you know, your role might be in Baltimore with the powers that be here? Yeah, um, I mean, the timing of it was uh, was a little crazy just with the holiday season and and everything. Um, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I'm excited uh, excited to be part of a, a young up, up and coming team. Um, the opportunity to, to kind of be a veteran leader and, uh, you know, just mentor some of the young players and, and lead Baltimore back to, um, you know, the playoffs and beyond. Brock Kubako, MassInSports.com. Hey, James, is your perception of the organization and of the team maybe changing uh, since however many years ago because the club now, you know, unexpectedly posted a winning record this past season and, and seemed to be on the upswing? Yeah, um, you know, I didn't get to see them last year in person. Uh, you know, obviously see a lot of highlights, uh, but I think that the youth and the talent there, um, I mean, since I've been traded, uh, guys around the league have reached out to me and that, that saw them, especially down the stretch this year, talked about how, how talented of a roster uh, the Orioles have and um, that we're going to be, be a good team. So, um, again, I haven't seen uh, these guys in, in person just because we, we didn't play the Orioles. Um, but seeing them in highlights, seeing what uh, what they accomplished down the stretch, uh, I think there's a lot of things to be excited about in Baltimore. Dan Connolly, The Athletic. James, last year seems to be an outlier for you in, in several different ways. But in, in one sense, you played 105 or more games pretty much in your entire career, with the exception of last year. Um, with Ali Rutschman with the Orioles, obviously he is going to be the primary starter. Um, are you prepared for not playing 100 games for the first time in a long time, you know, not, not including last year? And what is your sense of, is there, is there a number, a total, that you would like to play at the end when all said and done? Yeah, you know, um, Adley's obviously a very talented player. Um, he, uh, you know, came up last year and had, had a heck of a season. Um, I'm looking forward to working with him, <clears throat> looking forward to, uh, you know, offering any sort of, um, you know, just, just veteran experience uh, to help him and, and his learning curve um, and understanding, uh, you know, calling a game and managing a game at, at a big league level. Um, you know, I'm, I can't control, uh, you know, how many games I play, how many games I don't play. Um, all I can control is the, the kind of teammate I am and, um, you know, what I, what I do when I, my name does get called. So uh, I'll be prepared for, for whatever comes my way. And, um, you know, again, I'm 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 looking forward to to meeting Adley and and hopefully uh, you know helping him continue to develop. Stan Charles, press box. Hey James, happy New Year to you and welcome to Baltimore. Um, quick question about James McCann, the hitter, because uh, I've watched your career since you started in Detroit. It looked when you got to Chicago that you really started to improve as a hitter. Can you give us the horses from the horse's mouth? What happened to you in 21 and 22? I know 22 was an injury riddled season. Yeah, um, 22, uh, actually, <clears throat> uh, the injuries, um, obviously, I, I missed more games. I spent more time on the injured list in 22 than I had in my entire career combined. Um, so 22, I, I definitely think is an outlier. And um, if you actually, if you look at 22, uh, the expected numbers and, and hard hit and all that, everything was good except for the actual results. Um, you know, just, you know, things really just didn't bounce my way in 22, whether it was injuries or uh, hitting balls right at people. So, um, you know, 22, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a lot that I learned from it. Uh, 21, um, I think there's a lot that, that went in 21, uh, a, a new league facing pitchers that I, I hadn't faced uh, really my whole career, um, hitting uh, at, at times throughout the, the season with a pitcher hitting behind me, um, you know, and, and without having a DH in 21. Uh, and there's some habits that I, that I created in 21 that, that I actually fixed in 22. Um, and like I said, unfortunately, the, the, the numbers don't show that. Um, but I, I'd fallen into some bad habits in, in 21 um, that uh, I feel like I was able to fix. So um, without getting into too much detail, um, I, I think that, uh, you know, 19 and 20 weren't, weren't necessarily outliers, um, you know, being in, in Chicago. I think that uh, I can get back to, to, to playing at that level. Thank you. Nathan Ruiz, Baltimore Sun. 
Hey, James, what excites you, what interests you in working with those Orioles pitching staff? And, and what do you feel like you as a catcher bring that can help them? Well, um, <clears throat> just the youth and the talent. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, I've had numerous guys reach out to me and talk to me about how, how talented um, the guys are. You know, hearing about the, the bullpen um, that Baltimore's put together, hearing about, uh, you know, the, the youth and just the you know, the, the unbelievable talent, um, guys telling me how much they hated having to face the Orioles uh, pitching staff. Again, I didn't get to, didn't get to see it firsthand, but, um, when I have guys telling me that, that that's a good sign. So, uh, what can I bring? Um, you know, I, I've, I've caught quite a few pitchers in my career. Um, I've seen Cy Young winners. I've, I've helped guys, um, get to, you know, get, get to where they are. Um, so I can bring a, a lot as far as, uh, you know, sharing what, what different guys do is routine, sharing um, different p- bits and pieces that I've learned over the course of my career. Um, it, you know, one thing that, that you just can't replace is experience. You can't um, take a, a guy that's only played for one or two years and expect him to have the experience and, and the knowledge that somebody who's played uh, for an extended period of time at, at this level has. So, uh, you know, I think it, part of my role, um, you know, whether it's in Baltimore or whether I was in New York, wherever is, is sharing that expertise, sharing what I've learned in my career. And I'm a big believer that, that that's the job of a veteran players to, to share with the young players a um, little bit of information just to help them, uh, you know, in their development. And, and hopefully, like I said, uh, you know, a learning curve, everyone's got a learning curve. So if you can help speed that process up just with, um, you know, maybe a keyword here or a keyword phrase here, you know, Hey, guys going through a tough stretch, um, you know, here having a veteran player who's been there and been through tough stretches and come out of it, uh, talk to a young player, that, that's, a, that's a game changer. Um, you know, the, the baseball is such a mental game. If you can have a guy that's, that's been around and experienced failure, experienced success, and uh, the ability to share those experiences with a young player, a lot of times that, that can help the young player a lot, out a lot. Jake Rill, MLB.com. Hey, James, how comfortable are you at first base? Have you talked to the team at all about possibly getting some time there? Yeah, we've, um, <clears throat> when I, when I talked uh, the night of the trade, uh, talked about, you know, both Adley and I getting time, you know, behind the plate, first base, DH. So uh, I played a little bit in college. I've played more here in the last couple of years um, at the big league level. Um, and knowing that, that there's that uh, potential opportunity, that, that's something this off season that I'll continue to, to take ground balls and, and make sure that, like I said earlier, whatever I can do to help the team, um, I'm, I'll be ready to do it. Rich Dubroff, BaltimoreBaseball.com. Hey, James, have you talked to uh, Adley yet? Not yet. Like I said, with the <clears throat> the timing of the trade and the holidays, um, I've, I've spoken to just a select few people within the organization. I plan to, uh, this week, I'm actually in the process of moving. My family and I are moving um, this week, so I've kind of had a lot going on. But uh, the plan is to... Um, to get in touch with guys here that now that we're in the new year. And, um, you know, I always, I always like to say that, that up until the holidays, guys are kind of, you know, on their own program. And then once we hit January is when I really start trying to, to dive in and, and connect with my guys. Stan Charles. James, uh, one quick question. Uh, you're coming to a new team, obviously new pitching staff is spring training enough time to get the feel of, of the pitchers you'll be working with. Uh, yes and no. Um, you know, with all the data that we have now, uh, I, I will be able to know guys' strengths and weaknesses just based off the data. Um, it, the the part of spring training that is going to be getting those in-game reps, getting those, um, you know, when a guy misses with a pitch, what's his miss? You know, the data doesn't necessarily show that as, uh, as clearly as what a guy's strengths and weaknesses are. Um, the big thing for me during spring training, other than you know, seeing the pitches live and, and, and just forming the, the, the on-field relationship with, with pitchers is the, um, the off-the-field relationship. You know, when uh, just having conversations, getting to know a guy, getting to know about his family, getting to know where he grew up, where, where he's from, little things like that that, um, you know, I like to think that as a catcher, uh, that's just as important as the on-field aspect because, you know, when things are, are, are going tough or, or things are going really good, you know, how do you treat a guy? Um, understanding what makes a pitcher tick is one of the most important jobs that a catcher has and, uh, you know, being able to get the most out of them. So I think that knowing uh, that background type stuff is, is as important as anything. And that, so that's what I mean as far as yes and no. It's a, it's a, quick, it's a quick time, but um, there is time to, to get to know guys. 
We have a couple more questions. Nathan Ruiz, go ahead. James, you mentioned, obviously, it's a busy time with the holidays and your move, but have your conversations with the Orioles at all talked about how they believe they can help you, the areas they believe they can help you improve? Uh, we haven't gotten that in depth yet. Um, we we kind of just touched on the surface of everything and plan to, to get back in contact now that the new year has, has gotten here. So, um, like I said, we haven't really gotten in depth about anything yet. Andy Koska. Hey, James, you mentioned how, like, analytically and, like, the metrics you had last season – were, were good you know hard hit percentage k rate was down things like that how was it just like from a personality like personally for you like trying not to get too frustrated when you know injuries and things that you can't really control kind of stack up in that way yeah no that's uh <clears throat> that's the, the hardest thing about this game um baseball is a game of failure and whoever fails the least are, are the best players um if you fail 70 percent of the time you're a hall of famer there's not many other jobs out there where if you fail 70 percent of the time you're actually going to keep your job much less be the best at it um so yeah, it is frustrating. It was very frustrating going through it, but uh, I also know that at my position, um, the value that I bring on the defensive side is 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 tremendous compared to what I can do offensively. Um, you can go four for four and, and drive in runs, but if behind the plate you you let in more than you uh, than you drive in, then your, your team's going to lose. Um, so I, I'm I, that's something that I take a lot of pride in is uh, separating the offense from the defense and knowing that I can have a major impact on a game um, without ever doing anything offensively. Uh, and so, you know, being able to balance that is, is something that, that helped me get through the year, um, through the frustrating times. Um, and I also know that, that I've been through, um, I've been through the downs before. I've experienced failure at this level and I've found a way to, to succeed after. Um, I, I was non-tendered after 2018 and I was an all-star in 20, 2019. So um, I've been there, I've experienced failure. Uh, and I, I do think that that's part of, uh, one of my strengths as a player is, is being able to, to uh, communicate with other players that may be experiencing failure and um, be able to, to just kind of, you know, get them through the, those tough times. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot more tough times than you do good times. And that's just the nature of this game.